What is up, guys? Welcome for week seven of the GPC. This week, we are taking on Paul and the Doofer Drapions. My opponent has an extremely threatening team. Let me just go over it real quick with you guys. He has Weavile, Clefable, Alamomola, Donphan, Chandelure, K uh, not Kiram, sorry, Haxorus, Thunderous T, Machoke, Flygon, Tangela, Abra, not there for any real reason and mega agron so he has a total of 12 mons eight of which are extremely threatening to my team so i had to be very careful with team building and how i decided to prep now there isn't any team builder this week because i had an initial team planned and i decided to switch it up uh because uh i had a test game with johnny this morning and there were a lot of things that i had to make adjustments on so uh, this is pretty much the team that i expected i did kind of expect the mega agron to show up for gardevoir uh, but it's not really a switch because it still takes 30 to 35 percent on the switch from a hyper voice and then it gets knocked out by a focus blast so it's not extremely reliable uh, so I guess that's why he didn't bring it. Don Fan was a great bring. He knows I like to spike stacks, so Paul made a great uh, decision in team building. So let's just get into this game real quick. Init initially, I see that he has the Thunderous T, which can come in on my Zapdos pretty much whenever, soak up an electric hit. Uh, he also has the Dawn Fan, uh, which we find out later is fully specially defensive to be able to take on Gardevoir and uh, Zapdos and things like that. And he has a very interesting Alamomola set as well. So. The biggest threat when I was team building that I saw was Chandelure. I knew that Chandelure was a possibility to sweep my entire team with special hits. I do not have a very good special wall, especially one that takes ghost plus fire coverage. And then of course there's also grass because it gets en energy balls. So I had to rely on Blastoise as a pivot just to see what it would lock itself into if it was choice. Uh, so that's what I decided to go with. You guys can see our team at the bottom, Mean Xiao, Mega Gardevoir, Klefki, Hippowdon, our newest member. Uh, Blastoise and Zapdos. So let's just get into the game real quick. This is actually a really fa like short game, but it took about an hour because we had to think about our plays like every single turn. So let's get into this. I decide to lead off with Blastoise. It has the best lead matchup against his entire team. I'm just going to throw out a Surf here. Uh, I'm going to be able to hit the Clefable for a sizable amount of damage. First turn crit, not a huge deal. It is a Clefable. Uh, now I'm going to go for the Yawn uh, because I want to force his Clefable out. I don't. I want it to either go to sleep or force it out. So he goes for a Thunder Wave. Uh, now I make a questionable play. I go for uh, a Toxic here. Had I toxic him, he wouldn't have fallen asleep, but I knew that he would switch. I knew that he didn't want that thing asleep. So I'm going to toxic. I catch the Alamomola on the switch, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to switch into Gardevoir, risking a burn potentially, but I knew he wouldn't go for Scald more than likely. Uh, he's actually going to throw out a knockoff, and I see knockoff, and I'm like, okay. Uh, he has knockoff, potentially Scald. What is this guy carrying? And I have the Regenerator right now, so I'm going to switch out to get my health. I just wanted to switch out on, on this thing just to see what it would try to hit me with. And I'm going to go out into my Zapdos here, because this puts pressure on his Alamomola. And he reveals the Mirror Coat, so he's a fully spidef set, probably, with Mirror Coat to take on my Gardevoir and knock it out. He's forced to switch out here. I'm going to go for the HP Ice, predicting either the Dawn Fan or the Thunderous T. That does negligible damage. That should have done 50 to 57, so he's fully spidef. Uh, so I'm pretty much forced to switch out here. I'm going to go into my Hippo here, as he's going to get up his rocks. Not a huge deal, but they will hinder me somewhat in this game. Uh, and I'm just gonna throw up my own rocks, force him to spin, see if he has it. Rocks are very crucial this game for me. As you guys can see, he has three rock weeks on his team. His main offense are all weak to rocks. He's gonna throw out a rapid spin. I'm just gonna earthquake him on this turn, uh, get off a little more damage on him, leave him at 62%. And here I feel like he's not gonna wanna stay in on me because he's losing more health uh, and he doesn't have any reliable recovery. So I'm just gonna get back up my rocks. Here he goes into the huge threat that is Thunderous. I do not have a switch to this thing. Uh, I have to stay in here and let him grass knot me. I knew he would pack the grass knot. We're gonna go straight down to that. That's absolutely fine. I could have gone into Klefki, but if he's not choice, then he just gets to hit me anyway. Here I'm gonna go into my Mean Shao, and I'm figuring this thing is not Scarfed. Uh, he proves that by switching out. Otherwise, he would have probably just hit me again. But I'm gonna throw off a Stone Edge here just in case he is and he decides to go for a Grass Knot. We're gonna get off some nice damage on this Alamomola, more than I expected to from a Life Orb Stone Edge. Uh, he's gonna take 6% there, and here I could have gone for a High Jump Kick to knock this thing out. But his Chandelure is still in the back. And if that thing comes in and I get crash damage, I have no switches to its Shadow Ball anymore. So I have to be extremely careful about when I click fighting moves, especially ones like High Jump Kick. So here I'm just going to go for another Stone Edge, and unfortunately I miss. He's going to go for a knockoff. Not a huge deal, because, I mean, uh, the Life Orb wasn't doing too much for me this game. If anything, it was just hindering me <laughs> taking off health. He's going to go for an Aqua Jet here on this turn. It's fine. Uh, I'm just going to go for a High Jump Kick. 
Um, high jump kick has higher accuracy, and I knew he wouldn't switch out at that point, so... Uh, I'm going to uh, switch out on his Chandelure, which finally comes in here to this game. I'm going to get my Regenerator. I'm going to go into Blastoise, and he's going to Shadow Ball me, and he's going to get a Spadef drop. And now this is pretty big because I have to make a read here. I have to either decide, is he just going to Shadow Ball again and play off of Para? Uh, maybe try to get a crit and just knock me out right here? Or is he going to switch out? Because if I click Mirror Coat, which is my last move, and he attacks me, I get to knock out his Chandelure. If he stays in and I Surf, I get to knock him out. If he switches out into Clefable and I click Mirror Coat, I reveal it for no reason. So, I'm going to just click Surf, just play it safe, as in fact he is going to switch out into his Clefable. Now right here, I debated clicking Mirror Coat. I actually get fully parried on that turn, which is really unfortunate, uh, but it's fine, it doesn't really matter. I debated clicking Mirror Coat here because I knew it would do a lot of damage to this Clefable and put it in range of Hyper Voice uh, from Gardevoir, but... I didn't think that he would actually attack me. I thought he would go for something else. So I decide to surf. He goes for the moon blast and I get off the surf, which is fine. Uh, but I took unnecessary damage and it's all because of that spadef drop. And you guys will see. Uh, I'm going to switch out here and I'm going to go into Klefki. Uh, he can't really hit me too hard, but he's going to go for moon blast, gets a crit and another special attack drop. So now I can't even fire off a flash cannon even if I wanted to. Here, I'm going to predict him to switch out into Dawn Fan because Dawn Fan is built to take on this Klefki. It's just going to spin on me anyway, and I need those rocks up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull a double here, go out into Gardevoir, get his Magic Guard, which doesn't really matter, uh, as he's going to go into Dawn Fan, and here I have to stay in. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention is that Showdown wasn't showing me percentages, so I didn't know how much his Dawn Fan was, up, was at, but because of the HP Ice Damage from Zapdos earlier, I knew he was a max Spadef set, uh, careful nature, so this Hyper Voice had a chance not to take him out. It does... 60 and no, 58 to 64 or 68 i think i'm just gonna go for hyper voice and it is actually gonna knock out his dawn fan luckily we get that roll uh but now his weavile is gonna come in and threaten me so here i'm uh forced into a position where i either have to predict a pursuit uh and lose my gardevoir in the process uh or if he does pursuit and i stay in i get to knock out his weavile or i can just switch into klefki it's my built response for this it's fully physically defensive it can take an icicle crash even from the range it's at it can take two actually uh, and we'll be able to uh, mitigate this thing. Now, this is a very crucial turn here coming up, guys. Let me just explain. So, my opponent has rocks up on his side. I have a Klefki. He's clearly going to switch into Thunderous, because if I Thunder Wave this thing, then it's pretty much useless. It's slower than everything on my team, including Mean Xiao. Um, including Blastoise, actually, if it wasn't paralyzed. Uh, but... I decide he's probably going to switch out into Thunderous. Let me just throw off an attack and weaken his Thunderous. This was a very bad play, and let me let me tell you why. Thunderous is going to die to a Stone Edge regardless, so there is absolutely no reason for me to attack it here. I I my responsibility here as a good player is to set up as many spikes as possible and limit his switch ins to Weavile and to Chandelure. But I figured I could take them on anyway. So I'm just going to attack with a play rough, weaken this thing, and then I'm going to go for a spike, and his Thunderbolt is going to be able to knock us out, because like I said, we're max Fizz Def, not Spadef, so this is easily going to knock us out. And now I'm going to go back into Mean Xiao and pretty much confirm that this thing isn't Scarf by attacking it here and knocking it out. So had I gotten up the second layer of spike, Klefki would have dropped either way, and I would have been able to take out his Thunderous with a uh, Stone Edge. Of course, I had to hit, but still, it would have been gone. This thing would have been dead. So, I pretty much got up one last layer of spike for no reason. And as you can see, his Chandelure is now sitting at 39%. This means that he can switch in one more time at 2%. And this is very important. So, here I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go on to my Blastoise. I'm just going to sack it. And my plan here on the end game was to go into Zapdos, set up a Tailwind, and win. Have him attack me. Just knock me out with two hits, go for a Thunderbolt, bring in Clefable if you want. I'm just going to roost up on it and set up another Tailwind. Uh, but he actually goes hard into Clefable on my Tailwind. So I'm forced into a position where I have to attack him. I go for Thunderbolt and it does just enough so that after a Calm Mind, he's still knocked out by the following Thunderbolt. We're getting to the end of the game here, guys. There's very few turns left. I'm going to Thunderbolt. I'm going to knock out his Clefable. It was, of course, a roll. The first one did 47, was it? Yeah, so it was a roll to knock him out. 
Uh, but sorry about that. Let me just scroll back up here. There we go. Now we're back to normal. Uh, but I took the chance and I went for the roll. I didn't really have another play anyway. Why does this keep scrolling down? Um, there we go. I didn't really have another play anyway. And this is a pivotal turn once again. This is all pivotal turns. He brings in a Chandelure, last stand. Now, the only way his Weavile can win is if it hits three Icicle Crashes in a row. So, I have two choices here. I can either play off of his Choke Shadow Ball, because Shadow Ball doesn't do... A, well, it can two-hit KO me. It can two-hit KO me after Leftovers, but it's a low roll. It's low balled. Um, so... I mean, it's, it, he, he needs two high rolls, so it's, it's a very low chance. Uh, so if I go for a Tailwind here, if I go for a Roost here, go back up to full, and he clicks Shadow Ball, and I'm able to live the following one, I can go for a Tailwind, and knock him out on the following turn with Thunderbolt. His Weavile has to come in and Ice Shard me, and then I win with Mean Shell. So that's what I decided to do, except my opponent's a little bit better than that, and he clicks Fire Blast, but he crits me on this turn. So that means I don't even get a chance for him to miss another Fire Blast and set up a Tailwind. As a result, I'm forced into Gardevoir. He goes for Fire Blast, knocks me down to 10%. Whether he got the burn there or not, it didn't really matter. Uh, and I go for a Hyper Voice, and here it's going to come down to the last two turns of the game, guys. It's Weavile that comes in, uh, as I said before, it comes in at 29, so it has three Life Orb hits. Uh, and it, only, it, had to, it had to hit three Icicle Crashes before, but now he can go for Knock Off because I'm low enough to where I'll die to that. And I have 32 HP EVs on my mean shell. It comes in at full. We have 279 HP. That means that after the Stealth Rocks, there is one roll on Icicle Crash that doesn't kill me. One out of 15 rolls. And he can still miss. So I'm banking off that. I sat there for a good 45 seconds before I actually clicked my move. My play was to click Poison Jab every single time. And he's going to go for the Icicle Crash, and unfortunately he hits and he gets 14, uh, one of the 14 out of 15 rolls. So a little bit unfortunate with that Spit F drop a little bit earlier on Blastoise, because I would have definitely been in a better position against the Chandelure. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to take me out with two more Shadow Balls afterwards after some Leftovers recovery. So I would have been in a great position. I wouldn't have had to sack off Blastoise uh, at any given point, and I would have... I should have gotten up the second spike realistically because then his Chandelure wouldn't have been able to switch back in. So it would have come down to the last turn of Tailwind. Uh, he would have had his Weavile in. He would have gone for Ice Shard on my Zapdos because uh, he didn't really have a choice. He's in the last turn of Tailwind. I would have switched out into Mean Shao, taken the Ice Shard, uh, given him a an extra Life Orb hit. Remember, an extra Spike is up at this point. And then I would have just switched out into back into my Zapdos and then back into my Mean Shao, and he has to hit me three times and he dies. So, that's a little bit of a misplay on my part, not getting up a second spike. That was definitely the, probably the most, most pivotal moment of the match. Uh, because again, he wouldn't have been able to switch out his Thunderous afterwards. Because my Mean Shao had, um, had Stone Edge, I would have hit his Clefable and I would have been able to Poison Jab it on the following turn. And Stone Edge knocked out his three offensive threats. So, very, uh, very poor play on my part there, but great game to Paul. A little bit of luck in his favor, but it's not like we haven't had that. Our game against Trev was pretty much all luck. Came down to a, uh, a Thunder Wave, um, full para, and then a miss from a Mega Horn, so I can't really complain. Uh, luckily, we only we only take a 1-0 loss, so we're still sitting at, I think, plus 5 with a 4-3 and three record. Uh, I've now gone 2-2 two and two at this point, and our next week's opponent is probably the most difficult opponent for us uh, the entire season. Um, this, just because of team matchup, but also because of the player that he is, and that is Lars, co coach of the Borussia Don fan, uh, player from the GBA, actually, so you already know he's highly competitive, he knows what he's doing, uh, he did take a loss, actually, to a player that we, uh, beat earlier in the season last week, so, or this week, rather, so, uh, if you haven't checked out that match, definitely go see it, uh, you already know the result because of me, but, uh, either way, it's, it was a very, very close match, and it came down to, uh, uh, to certain roles and stuff like that, so definitely go check that out. Anyway, you're gonna see us against him next week, and I might even live comm this match, uh, just to match up with his live comms, uh, cause he does do live comms, so. Uh, we might be back on the live comm, uh, grind next week, guys, so get ready for that. 
And uh, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. If you did enjoy this battle, it came down to the wire. As you can see, <laughs> Weavile is living on 9%. Um, it came down to the wire. So if you did enjoy it, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see more of these GPC matches, as well as any of the lives that I put out all week. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Catch you later. Ciao.